Hey guys, and welcome back to our YouTube channel. Today, we're going to try out another countertop project. If you've seen our videos before, you'll know we tried a faux granite look with the white base. We've also tried the Rust-Oleum countertop paint. And most recently, we tried a faux marble contact paper, hence the reason behind the current state of our kitchen island. When we removed the contact paper, it actually ripped up the paint that was underneath it, so we really need to fix this mess. But today, we're going to be painting our kitchen island to give it a dark gray granite look. Last time we did this, we had a white base coat, and we are trying to mimic a light granite look. However, I used a polyurethane as a top coat, and it eventually yellowed over time. But I've learned my lesson, and today we're going to be using a polyacrylic. I'm really excited to do this faux granite look again. Last time I had a lot of fun, but I think this is going to be even better this time around because I have a lot more colors to work with, and I'm going to go over the whole entire um, kitchen island, so it's going to have way more coverage than the white countertops did. So materials needed. First, we'll have to have an oil-based primer. We use this Kills brand, which was recommended to us. Next, we'll need our base color. Now for that, we're going to be using these two paints. This is a sample size of a bare paint, and this is just a regular dollar acrylic paint that you can find in the craft section of Walmart, Michaels, any hobby store. So you're not going to be using a ton of paint, so if you want to get um, one from Home Depot or Lowe's, this a sample size is a good bet, or just these work just as fine and some additional colors to give it that granite look. This is just a lighter gray color, and then this is actually a metallic um, color. I'm hoping to get some sparkle or shine into our countertop to give it kind of a realistic look. We will also need some sponges, which I have here to apply all of our colors. You'll want a paint roller, and this is a shorter one. It's about a six inch one. We need two foam rollers. You'll have one to apply the primer and one to also apply the polyacrylic at the end. They won't be reusable, so you definitely want at least two for this project and be prepared to throw them away at the end. So two foam rollers. And lastly, two disposable paint trays, one for your primer and one for your polyacrylic. The first step in this project will be sanding the existing surface. I would say it's optional if you're painting existing laminate countertops, but if you already have paint on top of your countertops, like we do, I would suggest sanding that off and getting a smooth surface to work with. Especially for ours, it's patchy and running your hands over, it's not smooth at all. So sand it over so you have a smooth surface to work with. I just got done with sanding the countertops and you can definitely see every project that this island has gone through. Now just a reminder, the point of sanding is just to make sure that you have a smooth surface. Uh, before I was able to like pick up the paint on these corners here and it would flake off, but now it's just a smooth surface and that's what you want. So our next step now, we are going to apply the primer. Before you leave, have the store mix the primer. Ours had been sitting in our garage for about a year from a previous project we did, and it separated quite a bit. That took a while to stir up, but now it looks good.
one is down, so we'll wait for this to dry and then apply a second coat. You can see all the patchy spots with the first coat, so we'll have to apply second and possibly third coat just to make sure we have an even surface that we're working with. This just finished drying, so we're ready to apply the second coat. Alright, the second coat is dry, so we'll go ahead and apply the third coat now. Looks like three coats will do the trick, and after this third coat is dry, we'll be able to go in with the acrylic paint. So this is the woven rollers. You want to avoid this because it will leave lint behind like this. All those little bumps in there, it's just the lint that this woven roller left behind. You can see it pretty good there, especially on um, this edge here. So that's what you want to avoid. The With the foam rollers, you won't get that. If you do accidentally use a woven roller instead of a foam roller, just go on top with a really light sandpaper and that will smooth out the surface. Alright, so I just went over it with a 220 grit sandpaper. As you can see, all of those lint bubbles are gone, so we have a nice smooth surface. It's smooth to the touch. So now we're ready for the fun part. Grab one of your sponge pieces and dip it into your paint. Dab off the excess on a paint tray or I'm just using a plastic plate. The good news is you can't mess this up because granite is unique and not uniform at all. Start with light pressure to get a good feel of it. You can practice on a piece of paper too if you have any concerns. You won't see much of the granite effect until you start adding more colors. But with this first coat, add enough pressure so you get adequate coverage, but not too much pressure that it becomes globs of paint. I do that in this clip a couple of times, but don't worry, your next color will fix it up. Also going to go on top of it with this solid black color just to give it a darker look and I believe I got this at Walmart for 60 cents less than a dollar now with this black color I'm doing the same thing going across the whole countertop except this time when I'm going through I'm focusing more on filling in these white areas where the primer is showing through
doing now is I have this pretty large chunk of a white area, so I'm just taking pretty much the excess off of the sponge and just going really lightly so it fills in the white spots but only gives it little speckles. It's not big globs like we were doing for the base coat. Next, I'm going to go in with my second color. This is a lighter bare marquee shade. It's in the color Silverstone. Repeat the same process with any additional colors you have. This is when you'll start seeing the granite look come through. After you get all of your colors down, you can fine tune your project by going back over with any of your colors to achieve the desired results. What you want to avoid is areas like this. You can see that the light gray here is really blotchy. It just is a solid light gray color. So I want to go back with my base colors really lightly and just give it a nice speckle effect. And this way it looks a lot more like granite wood. Here is the final look of the countertop with all of the different colors on it. Now we're ready to go in with the polyacrylic to seal it all off. Now that we have our beautiful faux granite look and we've also gone on top with a coat of polyacrylic, we're going to go ahead now with a really light sandpaper, 220 grit, and just lightly sand out the surface so that it is smooth to the touch. And then we'll go ahead again on top and add at least two more coats of polyacrylic. I wanted to take the time to slow this part down in real time to show you how I'm applying the polycrylic. I think the polycrylic is probably one of the most important parts of this project since it's sealing off um, what you had just made and you want to make sure you apply it really well. So what I did is I used the foam roller, poured my polycrylic into this tray and I'm putting quite a bit on my brush. As I was laying it, it was absorbing quite a bit of it, so um, I had to put more on my foam roller quite often, but it was really dry, absorbing it really fast, and I actually ended up doing about five or six coats of the polycrylic on top of this countertop, and um, I'm just trying to apply even pressure throughout the countertop going all the way across. And when I got to the end here um, and I stood back and looked at the countertop, I noticed I could see streaks from where each of my lines finished, if that makes sense. So what I did is um, I went back and just tried to apply even pressure throughout the whole countertop. And each time was a little different. When I'm doing it here, I'm going pretty hard trying to just get the same even pressure throughout the whole thing and other times it was better to 
just apply really light pressure or even no pressure at all. So just keep an eye out. If you see streaks, be sure to go back over it and see what looks best, whether that's going over hard or soft. Just make sure you're getting rid of those streaks. You will sand after each coat of your polycrylic except for the last and final coat. And after you've given everything enough time to dry, this is going to be your finished product. Let's go over prices for this project. The Kills Primer goes for $9. These 8 ounce bare marquee sample containers run for $4 a piece, but remember you can use any acrylic paint. This Craft Smart paint was 80 cents. I didn't show this in the video, but we also use this Folk Art Metallic Silver paint to give our faux granite kind of a shine or sparkle effect and this goes for $2. Next is the foam rollers in the frame. You can get a frame with one roller for about $5, and then the additional packs can run anywhere from $11 for a five pack, or just $5 for a two pack. A bundle of these small craft sponges is about $5, or you can get a larger sponge and cut it up into small pieces. The polycrylic will run you about $10, and then the sandpaper is $4, for six sheets of 220 grit sandpaper. And lastly, for paint trays, you can pick up a three pack for $3. Prices vary, and depending on what supplies you already have and what paints you decide to get, this project can vary anywhere from $20 to $40. Thank you so much for watching, and I really hope you enjoyed this YouTube video. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel and give this video a thumbs up.